great customer experiences today are very rare. And when you are the organization that provides them, you become a beacon of light in a very dreary customer service world. When you're the organization that sees through the lens, everything speaks, creates the wow, and, and employees feel good about working there, while it does take commitment, to me, it's worth every moment that you put into it because it results in extreme customer loyalty. Just that one ride cost a hundred million dollars to build. But think about this, when I ask people, what impressed you about Disney World? People say, it was clean. The people were friendly. From a design perspective, that's frustrating. But from another perspective, I think it's very important because Disney World is not selling rides. What are they selling? An experience. An experience. An experience. To me, that's the biggest similarity with banking. You know and I know that financial products are becoming more and more commoditized all the time. Rides are becoming more and more commoditized all the time. You can't compete on that anymore. It has to be the overall experience. So when we were going around the room saying, well, what are some things you could do? What are some ideas you have? What are some things you've heard about? And it came to Helen and she said, well, I don't know if it means anything to anybody, but what I do is I, um, I tuck in the Disney characters. <laughs> Imagine saying that in front of all your coworkers. Well, everybody thought this was the greatest idea, and it took off. Housekeepers were talking about it. Managers were talking about it. Uh, it's become kind of legendary there now. It's even become something of a competition for the housekeepers on different things they can do. Like some of them, they'll line the characters up in front of the television set and turn it on so you walk in. Just back away, kids. Just... Just back away. But all because one housekeeper said, I'm going to create some magic. The question that we need to constantly be asking ourselves is, whose lens are we using when we do what we do? If you're meeting as a team and you look at a particular step and you say, what would mediocre service look like? And we start brainstorming. I promise you, somebody in that group on some of those steps will say, you know what? What we just defined as mediocre Oftentimes, that's exactly what we're doing, which sounds negative, but it's not. Because remember, we're not talking about poor service. We're just talking about average, mediocre service. And many times, we have to admit, that is exactly what we're doing at some of these steps. And it provides you, as a leader, a marvelous springboard for saying, well, if that's what we're doing now, and we're saying that's mediocre, then what would excellent service look like? And that's where the ideas really start coming out. I was on a Southwest plane. We were landing. Flight attendant got on the microphone and said, when we pull up to the gate, be careful as you open the overhead bins. Items have a tendency to shift during flight. And as you know, shift happens. <laughs> so we were, what did she say? What? So we were, we were hanging on every word. When, when the plane landed, you know how they put on the reverse thrusters to slow the plane down? The co-pilot got on the microphone and went, whoa, big fellow, whoa, it's very slow down. So now as we got off the plane, what were we all doing? We were laughing. And that's not usually what you're doing, right? <laughs> Get out of my way. Now, here's my business question for you. How much did that cost Southwest Airlines to do that? Nothing. To me, that's the beauty of looking through the lens of the customer. It's not about money. It's about looking at what we are already doing, but turning that lens around. Every detail. Regardless of which piece of the business you're involved in, every detail is saying something to your customer. And the question, no matter how many employees you have, the question every one of them should be asking is, are the details saying what they're supposed to say? What are the Everything Speaks distractors? What are the things that can take away from the image that we're trying to project? And then what is Everything Speaks Excellence? What do we need to do to make sure that that doesn't happen? Imagine you bring your family down to Disney World and everybody's excited and you're out front and you're paying your money to get in. <laughs> but you're there, it's going to be worth it. Hang on, kids. Let me finish. Let me, and you start walking down Main Street and there she is in front of the castle, Cinderella. And your child. Your precious little child runs up to Cinderella, tugs on her dress, Cinderella turns around and she has a cigarette in one hand, a cup of coffee in the other hand, says, kid, I'm on break. <laughs> what would be the impact on your child? Probably need therapy, right?
But here's the business question. Does it matter how many billions of dollars they spent building Disney World at that moment? Does it matter? It's not worth anything. In the back of the customer's mind, you want them just to think for a moment, wow, that's it. Because, and this is the point, little wows add up. I believe world-class organizations have non-negotiables. That as an employee here, these things are non-negotiable. Imagine every single employee recognizing as non-negotiable being accurate, being available, partnering our, with our customers and teaching them something they didn't know. That's how you create the little wows that drive intense loyalty. <laughs> Hang on, I'm getting it. You're parked in Goofy 21, you're thinking, oh man, these Disney people can read my mind. The key control folks is they hand the keys back, you know, and then again, let's say it's the dad that locked the keys in the car. As we said, it's embarrassing. And so as they hand the keys back, they'll try and save the dad's pride. They'll say something like, I'm sorry the keys got locked in the car. Like it's their fault. I'm sorry the keys got locked in the car. And the dad will always say the same thing. That's okay. Always. <laughs> <laughs> the really tough ones say, just don't let it happen again. Yeah. Then there'll be trouble. Dennis Snow is an expert in customer service, employee development, and leadership. His customer service abilities were honed over 20 years with the Walt Disney World Company, beginning his career in 1979 as a frontline attractions operator, then moving throughout the company in various leadership positions, learning what it takes to run a world class, service driven organization. Dennis launched a division of the Disney Institute, which quickly became the fastest growing venture of the Institute and experienced repeat business of nearly 100%. He also spent several years teaching corporate philosophy and business practices to cast members and the leadership team. In his last year with Walt Disney World, Dennis's leadership performance was ranked in the top 3% of the company's leadership team. Dennis is the author of two books, Unleashing Excellence, The Complete Guide to Ultimate Customer Service, and his newest, Lessons from the Mouse, a guide for applying Disney World's secrets of success to your organization, your career, and your life. To me, that's what it comes down to. It all comes down to those moments of truth. And if we help our folks to see through the lens of the customer, if we help our folks to understand everything speaks, and if we help our folks to create those wows and we set them up for success to do it, at that point, it doesn't matter if it's healthcare or it's Disney World, it is magic. Thank you all very, very much for your attention. I hope these ideas have been helpful. Thank you very much.